Lighthouses are built to warn ships of big rocks, shallow coves, and other treacherous obstacles. Sometimes lighthouses have to be built in dangerous and hard to reach locations. So put on your life jackets. It's time to join me as we begin today's video of 15 lighthouses in dangerous environments. Number 15, St. Joseph Lighthouse. For most of the year, St. Joseph Lighthouse is a pretty place to visit. Located at the entrance to the St. Joseph River on Lake Michigan, this picturesque lighthouse was built in 1832 and stands apart due to its bright colors, octagonal tower, and long walkway. While this walkway is safe enough during the summer, in the winter it becomes pretty slippery. That's because the cold waters of the lake tend to splash on it and freeze over, causing the lighthouse to become an icy palace. And while it certainly may look pretty, I don't suggest venturing onto its walkway unless you want to slip and fall into the icy shore below. Number 14. Kritrongar Lighthouse When it comes to location, few lighthouses are in a spot that's quite as precarious as Kritrongar. Located off the Westmend Islands, which themselves are about 7.5 kilometers off the coast of Iceland, Kritrongar is a small red-roofed lighthouse that sits right on top of the largest of a set of three rock pillars. Built in 1939, the lack of helicopters at the time made building this lighthouse extremely difficult as the builders had to scale the cliffs by hand and hoist up materials in order to build it. However, now that it's complete, it ensures that ships in the area can pass through safely. And now that it has a helicopter pad, it's far easier and safer to get to than was in the past. However, despite the decreased risks, the small landing spot, high winds, and unforgiving conditions around the lighthouse still make it a tricky place to get to. Number 13, Rubieg Nude Lighthouse. When you think of dangerous lighthouse locations, brutally strong seas or frigid Arctic waters are probably what comes to your mind. However, the Rubieg Nude Lighthouse stands apart because it was almost destroyed by piles of sand. You see, the lighthouse used to be located on the coast alongside a few other buildings, and while it functioned from 1900 until 1968, the coastline around it soon began to erode. In the 2000s, things got so bad that it was completely abandoned, with many experts saying that the force of the sand would cause the lighthouse to collapse by 2020. However, in October of 2019, it was thrown a lifeline when it was moved 70 meters inland, and now is expected to last until 2060. Number 12, Kipsare Lighthouse. While most lighthouses sit on top of land, Kipsare Light is the only one on this list that has a base that's entirely underwater. Located off the Estonian island of Saurima when it was first built in 1933, it was located 100 meters inland from the coast. However, over time, erosion ate away at the shoreline, and this not only caused the lighthouse to go underwater, but also to severely tilt by as much as 15 degrees. Soon, locals nicknamed it the Leaning Tower of Saurima, and many thought that it would fall into the sea. Thankfully, strong wind gusts have pushed the lighthouse into a more upright position though I think it's fair to say that this lighthouse is anything but stable. Number 11, Flanan Isle Lighthouse. At the surface, the Flanan Isle Lighthouse may seem like a pretty benign spot. However, the truth of the matter is, is that it's anything but. It's located in Scotland's Outer Hebrides Islands, and the Flanan Isle Lighthouse became the scene of a murder mystery when, on December 15th of 1900, lighthouse keepers James Ducat, Donald MacArthur, and Thomas Marshall all disappeared. The inside of the lighthouse was pretty ominous, as several large items had been moved, and the entire lighthouse was in disarray. While this led to many conspiracy theories, experts believe that the lighthouse keepers were probably all washed out to sea by a massive rogue wave, which likely led to them drowning. As such, I'd suggest that you stay far away from this lighthouse during a storm. Number 10. Sletnis Lighthouse Sailing the Arctic is far from an easy task, so in order to help navigate the area's treacherous waters, the Sletnis Lighthouse was created built in 1905 in the far north of Norway along the Barents Sea. It's the most northern mainland lighthouse in the world, and it's often referred to as the North Cape Light because it marks the top of Europe. Sletnes is special due to the fact that it not only has to withstand the cold temperatures of the Arctic, but also is because it was able to withstand the fury of the Nazis. You see, during World War II, the lighthouse was occupied by the Germans, but as they retreated, they attempted to destroy the lighthouse. However, they failed in this attempt, as while the top of the tower was destroyed, the rest stayed intact. As such, it was promptly repaired, and by 1949, it was operating as usual. Number 9. Torlitis Lighthouse 
If you ever get the chance to visit the port city of Andros in Greece, then you can visit a lighthouse that looks a lot more like a wizard's tower than a building to help with ship navigation. It was first built in 1897 and rebuilt in the early 1950s after being destroyed during World War II. The lighthouse stands apart for its location. More specifically, it sits on a stone column that's been shaped by thousands of years of natural erosion, and the result is that it looks a lot like something out of a fantasy video game, due to its unique shape and winding staircase. While it became Greece's first automated lighthouse during its rebuild, and therefore no longer needs a lighthouse keeper, it still sits as a popular tourist site, as many come to get pictures of this incredible structure. However, given its precarious position, the chances of the rock weakening to a point where the entire thing collapses is highly likely. Number 8. St. George Reef Lighthouse If you set sail from Crescent City, California and travel 10 kilometers from the coast, then you may encounter the infamous St. George Reef Lighthouse. I say infamous because the lighthouse is known for its extremely high death toll. You see, right from the get-go, the lighthouse proved cursed, as during construction several workers lost their lives, a few went insane, and many more simply refused to work after spending just a small amount of time on site. When the lighthouse was finally completed in 1891, the total cost was twice that of the initial budget. However, this high investment didn't make the lighthouse any safer. After all, throughout its time in operation, five lighthouse keepers lost their lives, and in 1923, the lighthouse experienced a storm that was so violent that it caused 21-meter-high waves to sweep the engine house right off its foundation. As you might expect, this made the lighthouse far from an attractive place to work, and in 1975, it was finally decommissioned. Number 7. West Pierhead Lighthouse while the West Pierhead Lighthouse may not look like much in the summer, in the winter, the unique climatic conditions around it turn it into a massive ice castle. This lighthouse is located on Lake Erie near the city of Cleveland, Ohio, and was built in 1911 and automated in 1965. While it has sat mostly untouched ever since, in 2010 it began to be subjected to a strange environmental phenomenon. You see, since the lighthouse is very close to Lake Erie's cold waters, it can be hit by large waves that rise across the Cleveland Harbor break wall, and little by little, it began to be splashed by large waves that would freeze over, which in turn caused the entire thing to be covered in ice. Ever since, it's attracted visitors from across the state during the wintertime, making it a local tourist attraction. However, it's perhaps thanks to all of this uncalled-for ice buildup that the lighthouse now tilts to the right so it's quite likely that the entire thing will eventually topple over. Number 6. Tillamook Rock Lighthouse Of all the lighthouses on this list, few have a past that's quite as terrible as Tillamook Rock. Now, the lighthouse was built off the coast of Seaside, Oregon, and had to be made due to the terrible conditions that are found there. More specifically, the area is prone to massive storms, and so when contractors tried to find local builders to build the lighthouse on tiny Tillamook Rock, they found absolutely zero takers. This led to them having to bring in laborers who were unfamiliar with the area. Reportedly, the laborers who were brought there found the working conditions terrible, and early on in the construction process, a storm managed to carry away all of the water, tools, and supplies on hand, making life there a living hell for weeks. When the lighthouse was finally completed in 1881, things didn't get much better. After all, storms didn't just stop, and the lighthouse was not only hit by large waves, wind, and debris on a constant basis, but also managed to have its lantern room flooded and telephone lines destroyed several times. As a result, many lighthouse keepers saw their mental health seriously decline while working there, and soon the lighthouse began to be known as Terrible Tilly. Thankfully, the lighthouse was finally shut down on September 1st of 1957, and while it has changed ownership several times, it now sits as a columbarium that holds the ashes of 28 people. Number 5. La Jumen While many lighthouses are isolated, few are quite as remote as La Jumen. That's because, unlike practically every other lighthouse in the world, it appears to shoot out of the ocean, as the rocky outcrop it's on is so tiny that it's barely visible at all. This lighthouse is located off the Brittany region of northwestern France, which is notorious for being a difficult sea route. In fact, a total of 31 ships have been wrecked there between 1888 and 1904, and this high rate of disaster convinced the French government to construct La Jument in 1911. Built on a tiny rocky outcrop that's entirely surrounded by waves, it has absolutely no land around it. 
In order to build it in such a precarious location, French authorities had to take advantage of the 52 hours per year of low tide. And in order to switch out the keepers of the light, a boat had to come and create a zip line so the keepers could travel on and off. While this made living here absolutely terrifying due to the loneliness and lack of company, La Jumet became fully automated in 1991, and ever since, no one has had to work there. Number 4. Strombolicchio Lighthouse If you ever get the chance to sail north of the Italian island of Sicily, then you may get a chance to see one of the world's most incredible volcanoes. Known as Stromboli, it rises 924 meters above the surface of the Tyrrhenian Sea, and it's been in almost a continuous state of erupting for between two to 5,000 years. As you might expect, this makes the area a pretty dangerous place for boats to sail through. So in order to make the passage through the area safer, the Strombolicchio Lighthouse was built in the 1920s. Now, it's a tiny basalt column that is believed to be the core of an ancient volcano that eroded 200,000 years ago, and its location is quite convenient, as it's between Stromboli and a series of other volcanic islands. Now, in the past, living inside atop of this lighthouse was quite dangerous, as it's located just one kilometer away from the volcano. However, Strombolicchio was automated in 1991 and has been without human workers ever since. And as such, no one has to take the risk of living there any longer. Number 3. The Carillon Lighthouse The waters of northern France are known for being especially dangerous, as strong winds and bad weather have led to the destruction of many a ship. This has led to the creation of a series of lighthouses across the area, and of these, the Carillon Lighthouse is one of the most famous. Carillon marks the From Vieux, which is the passage between the island of Oisin and the archipelago of Molines. It's significant because this has the second strongest currents in all of France, making it a passage that is notoriously difficult to steer in. In order to make traveling through it a little bit easier, Emmeclé Labaudi offered the French government a sum of 580,000 francs to help build a lighthouse there, on the condition that it be named Carillon after her great uncle. The French government accepted this proposal and built the lighthouse on Mentenserac. This proved quite difficult, as it took 10 years to construct, with the building process even resulting in the death of a foreman. While the end result was quite beautiful, the lighthouse proved extremely difficult to staff, as its poorly secured location means that it's often hit with strong waves. However, after decades of operation, it was finally automated in 2004, and today it's considered to be a historic monument. Number 2. Snake Island Generally speaking, most lighthouses are surrounded by rocks or waves, but the lighthouse located at Snake Island is a little bit different. That's because it holds the unique distinction of being completely surrounded by venomous snakes. Officially known as Ilhe de Camara Grande, Snake Island is located off the coast of Sao Paulo and is infamous for being home to between one to five golden lanceheads per square meter. Golden lanceheads stand apart from most other snakes due to the fact that they're responsible for about 90% of all snake bite deaths in Brazil. And among lanceheads, the golden lancehead is known to be especially dangerous, as its venomous bite is strong enough to induce terrible symptoms such as blood in the vomit and urine, intestinal bleeding, kidney failure, hemorrhage in the brain, and severe necrosis of muscular tissue. As such, the Brazilian government banned anyone from stepping foot on the island very early on. And in order to make sure no one ventured on the island, they built a lighthouse in 1909 in order to ward people away. However, because it was not automated, this meant that a lighthouse keeper and his family were forced to live there, where they stayed in virtual captivity since it was too dangerous for them to leave the safety of the lighthouse. Thankfully, this situation came to an end in the 1920s after the light was automated. And today, the only humans that need venture onto the island are the Navy technicians that must go to the lighthouse once a year in order to do maintenance. However, given how dangerous the island is, I bet that there are few volunteers. Number 1. The Bishop Rock Lighthouse I think it's fair to say that few lighthouses are as lonely as the one that sits atop Bishop Rock. Located 45 kilometers off the coast of southwestern England on the Isles of Scilly, Bishop Rock is around 8,000 square feet at low tide, but completely covered at high tide with the exception of one building, the Bishop Rock Lighthouse. Now, while it may seem unwise to build a lighthouse on a rock in the middle of nowhere, it turns out that there's good reason. That's because in 1707, the HMS Association and three other ships crashed onto a rock that was close to Bishop Rock, killing 1,500 people in the process. 
Then, a little over 100 years later, Bishop Rock was struck by ships twice, and this finally prompted the British government to create a lighthouse here. Now, the process certainly wasn't easy. That's because the habitual high tides often destroyed any progress that was made on it. And in 1850, the entire thing got knocked over during a particularly nasty storm, destroying what had taken three years and the modern equivalent of about $1.9 million to construct. However, it was finally completed in 1858, and ever since its renovation in 1887, this dangerous lighthouse has become pretty comfy, as it now consists of 10 floors, holds a water tank, two oil rooms, a living room, a bedroom, and a helipad on top. Now, while a small group of lighthouse keepers used to spend their days here, it was automated in 1991. And nowadays, it serves as a hotel. Watch our binge-watching playlist if you'd like to watch all of our most popular top 15 videos. Grab a drink, grab a snack, and get ready to binge.